It's Winter Picks Dinner. Food and Wine Edition. Hey man, fam, it's time for another episode of Winner Picks Dinner. This is the game where we get two competitive playing rock, paper, scissors to determine where we eat for a multi-course meal. And this time we're doing it at Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. And maybe I'll win a few. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. Uh, don't catch yourself out. If you're new to Winner Picks Dinner, this is how the game works. We will be having a six-course meal around Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. Drink booth. Savory booths one, two, and three. Dessert booth and drink booth number two. To kick off each round, we will play a game of rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins get to decide which booth we eat at for that course. But you have to choose wisely because once a booth has been chosen, you cannot select it again. My record, terrible. My competitive spirit, high. <laughs> My chances, 33.3%. 33.3. 33.3. My hopes, low. Oh. On shoot? On shoot. You got it? Yep. Okay, ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh. And so it begins. The problem is, I didn't really expect to win, so I, thank you. I hadn't really planned out. I knew where I want, I know where I want to eat. But I hadn't really thought about drinks yet, so give me a moment to peruse. Okay, the goal is to try things that we didn't try last time, even though there were a lot of favorites in the food and wine video. Trying to try something new. Let's see, Flavors and Fire has a bonfire beer. I don't know what that means, but I'm interested. The Fry Basket has a salty dog cocktail with vodka, grapefruit, ginger, lime. No dog listed though, that feels dishonest. Uh, we could do the cider flight at Brewing. We did the beer flight last time. We could try the other margarita at Mexico. A lot of wine, which I do like. Ooh, the frosé at the Alps is so good. But I might want that for dessert because they have fondue. Okay, I've made my decision. Though it be dishonest, I'm very intrigued by the Salty Dog Cocktail to the Fry Basket. The Fry Basket is a food and wine booth that specializes in one thing and one thing only, French fries. You can do a fry flight where they've got three different kinds of fries. You can do yucca fries, and you can do one of our best of the fest from this year, the pickle fries. But today, we're not munching on fries, we're drinking fries. It is potato vodka, I guess. Technically, that's not a lie. It might be early in the video, but it's already time for a... Uh, trash can table time, it's trash can table time. Ba -ba -da. We grabbed the two beverginos from the fry basket, starting off with the Salty Dog Cocktail. This is Boyd and Blair potato vodka with grapefruit juice, ginger, simple syrup, lime, and a salted rim, and patently no dog. And then we also picked up the Stone Brewing Buena... Yeah, I struggle with it too. Buena Vesa? Yeah. Buena Vesa salt and lime lager. So both salty, much like your ex. It tastes like Gatorade, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. As much as I like lemon lime Gatorade, I do wish there was a little bit more of that ginger flavor. That's part of why I chose this, because I enjoy something like a mule. But I like that it's not too sweet because of the grapefruit, and you can taste the vodka just a little bit on the back end. It's a nice, refreshing pre-made cocktail. I'm not mad at it. And I picked up the Stone Brewing Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Beer. Huh. So baseline, this, if you're a Corona drinker, you'll really enjoy this. It has a little bit of, a little bit of extra lime. It's kind of like if the Corona had the lime already added. It doesn't taste artificial, which is nice. I think this is a really refreshing, nice to nab beer that isn't gonna take anybody too far outside of their comfort zone. Uh, and if you're part of the family, you, you have to, it's a requirement. Would Dom Toretto approve? Uh, Dom approve for sure. You can have any beer you want, as long as it's Corona. It's like he's here. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! <gasps> you finally won! <laughs> I am Jason Momoa! Wait, no, I'd be Vin Diesel in this analogy. 
whatever, I'll take the win. Oh my God. I would not be dumb, okay? If I was in the family, uh -huh. I would be Rowan Pierce. Are you saying I would be dumb? No. No, 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 you would not be dumb. You're way too nice to be dumb. Dom thinks pretty highly of himself. Uh, you might be the rock. Move over, cookie puss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Molly took round one. Good drinks though. It's time for uh, savory booth number one. Ready? Yep. Right, you got a firm grip. All right. Uh, paper, scissors, shoot. Uh, it's over. It's over. This feels good. The losing streak might be over. If I win one more today, I'll consider it that way. Okay, savory booth. Not repeating anything. Wipe my sweat stash. Okay, Hawaii has opened, which means that amazing pork slider, so that's a possibility, although I know Alan wants that, and I assume he'll pick that if he wins a savory, so I might pick something else. The noodle, ba uh, the, the noodle bucket, basket, noodle stop, noodle palooza, noodle exchange <laughs> opened, uh, but hot soup sounds like a no for me right now. We get a taco in Mexico, or, no, we're going to Mexico. I want Mexico to redeem itself. Made it to the Mexico booth. Now when I say it needs to redeem itself, it's because when we did our original food and wine video, we got the tostada and it was very lackluster, which is a bummer because traditionally I think Mexico is one of the best foodie pavilions in Epcot. Additionally, their festival food is usually really, really good and makes best of the fest. But you know what? Sometimes on the first day or the first couple days, maybe things aren't in the groove yet. They could make improvements. So we're gonna try the tostada again and then also try the taco, which we have not had yet. And the food has arrived. We have the tostada de carnitas and the taco de costilla. The tostada is braised pork on a fried corn tortilla with black beans, avocado mousse, queso fresco, and chives. And the taco is slow braised beef short rib on a corn tortilla with salsa de chile morita avocado mousse, and spring onions, as well as a healthy dose of cilantro on top. First up, the new to my mouth item, the taco. Mm -hmm. In the immortal words of Harry from Dumb and Dumber, I can't believe you went and did something like that. And totally redeem yourself. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was skeptical looking at this taco because cheese is my favorite food and there's no cheese on this taco, which made no sense to me. But there is so much of this delicious, tender, moist meat, creaminess from the avocado, and the salsa actually has some heat. My complaint about the tostada was it was too dry. That is not the case here. I love, it seems like a house-made corn tortilla. This is a very good little taco. Simple deliciousness, really good. And I have the tostada, which, if you'll recall, during our food and wine video, the, the feedback was there was not a lot of meat for the... Take two, hold the plate. Yeah, we're holding the plate, okay. If you'll recall from our food and wine video, the feedback was there was not a lot of meat on this. Now there is, and there is also a gust of wind for the cilantro. Hold tight, it's like a scene in Twister. Yeah. Okay, we're going to try to eat this. Cheers. Big improvement from the first time around. A lot more of the meat is present. Very, very moist, well cooked, well spiced. I'm just a big fan. Also the texture contrast with the tostada, big fan. The only thing that I have to add, and this remains true from last time, is that I need something else that introduces a little bit of acidity or vinegar or spice into this, because as it is, it's one note. I mean, it's a tasty note, but I'd appreciate a chorus and I don't get that right now. But I will say, just like when we had it the first time, it needs a salsa. We need something to be a little bit spicier on this. But solid dish. Glad to see they've added more pork. Round number three. Number three. Can she go three for three? Probably. Today's not my day. Yeah, every other day is though. Ready? Yeah. All right. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. And the streak is over. We're going to Hawaii. There's really no need to 
think about this. I want that pork slider. So... Victory was fleeting. Shall we? And in a surprise to absolutely no one, Hawaii is of course my booth of choice. And it's really for everything on the menu, but mainly the Kahlua pork slider. Now there are other items on the menu that I do want to try, like the Spam Sushi or Spam Musubi. Uh, but that's probably going to have to come on our revisitation to food and wine. Well, it's another festival and another rendition of... Trash can table time, it's trash can table time. Bam, bam, bam. Mahalo. Now this is a Kahlua pork slider with sweet and sour dull pineapple chutney and a spicy mayonnaise, all on a Hawaiian roll. And you saw we got two because obviously both Ma and I need our own individual ones for this delicacy, this delight. I'm so excited. All right, time for the best item in the festival. So it's just so good. The pork is rich, a little bit acidic with that pineapple chutney and the spicy mayonnaise to add a little bit of spice. All in the sweet Hawaiian roll. Just so good. I just, I miss this. And here you'll see the influencer has gone to get napkins. The slider was quite messy and napkins were needed, but napkins were forgotten in the excitement of the slider. He has returned with his gathering and he presents the napkins. It's on the camera. I have a savory dish I really want, but I fear my streak is over. But we'll so try. much self-doubt. So much self-doubt. If you had the worst record, if you had if you had a record worse than Max. Max you, has played far fewer games. Yeah, but at, we did the math. He still has a better average than I do. We got this though. It's literally just luck. Here we are. Ready? Ready? Yes. Are you are you ready? Were you about to ask if I was excited and then changed your mind? Yep, I, I did. Yeah, I could feel that. I did. I've yeah, right, changed right. I'm, No, I'm, I'm ready and excited. All right. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Beep, bop, boop, bop, seats, up, sore. Beep, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, This guy. It's very limp. <laughs> well, I was considering something like the Dan Dan noodles from China, just because it's new. We've been to China, but didn't get that. But it's hot noodles in Florida, which is why I'm avoiding the noodle exchange. I guess it's unavoidable at some point, but it's fine. What seems interesting to me though, is we got the unnecessarily spicy wings at Brewing, and we've had peanut butter and jelly sticky wings before, but they added orange cardamom wings, which sounds like a flavor combo that I would like to try. So yeah, let's go there. And up next is Brewing at the Odyssey, hosted, of course, by Muppet Labs. <sighs> what a good takeover. I mean, yes, of course, we love Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker <laughs> making us delicious. Experiments? Experiments, yeah, yep, there's there a pickle milkshake. But also, if there's one Muppet that's cooking, shouldn't it be Swedish Chef? Absolutely should be. Huh. I'm now going through a crisis. It should be Chef. Maybe he is the one in the back making it, but it's Bunsen's they're the Beaker's ideas. They're the face of the operation? They're the idea man. Huh. I hope that Chef is able to put his own spin on something. Maybe that's the orange cardamom wings. If you were a Muppet, which one would you be? Kermit. Yeah, that's true. And what about you? You already know. Yeah, Miss Piggy. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. For the past few festivals, Epcot has been using the Odyssey Pavilion as an indoor booth. And as you can see, we've been graced by Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker on the screen. They show up every few minutes. I'm not gonna lie to you, as I mentioned in our food and wine video, I thought they would physically be here, not just screens. But it's still really cute in here. If you read all the signage on the walls, it's very funny and very Muppety, lots of puns. But I really like that Epcot's been using this space for food and wine and other festival booths because it's indoors, lots of seating, it's fun to do the theming. There's really good bathrooms in here. PSA, not many people know that either. And here is the influencer. He has finally spotted the rest of his herd and he appears to have brought back extra prey. 
Um, I thought we were on savory dish number three and we're getting wings. I panicked. Also, it looks good. Okay, I know these are the orange cardamom wings, but what am I looking at here? Uh, that is the Cider Flight. So it's Blake's Hard Cider Company Tropicalada Hard Cider, Bold Rock Peach Berry Hard Cider, and Three Daughters Brewing Raspberry Lemonade Hard Cider. All right. Look at these bebe wings. They're so small. This is, this is a quail that made this. It's a quail's wing. It's a chick. No. So much worse than a quail. Just say it's a quail. No. No, I want to eat it. All right, cheers. Your ear attacked me. Huh. Yeah, I wish I could taste orange or cardamom more. I can kind of taste orange. I don't taste cardamom at all. They're really sticky. Almost marmalade, like yeah. orange marmalade coating. Oh, I got some cardamom in that bite. I don't care for these. They're also dry. Yeah. This is not a very good wing, which is a bummer because the really spicy ones very good. were actually very good. They were genuinely very spicy, but they were moist. They had a ton of good curry flavor. This ain't it. You know what? I'm just gonna say not a winner. So thank goodness I got the cider flight. Can't all be winners. Mmm, orange. You got it? Mm -hmm. Like a lot. Now it tastes like Chinese food. Like bad Americanized Chinese food. Keep describing it for the people at home. <laughs> like when you're kind of hungover and you could order Panda Express. Like that. We haven't had to do that recently. I'm more of a burger girly in that situation. Same, but not a girly. You'd be a burger girly. I'm a burger girly. Okay, well, after those wings, I thought it's time to wash them down with a bit of, um, not wings. Fruity wings to fruity drinks. Clink. Okay. Listen, I know you don't like peach, but this is very good. I do like peach. Do you? It's one of the few fruits that I enjoy. Well, no, that's all. Do you like strawberries? I like a lot of fruits. I don't like artificial fruit. But regular fruit, I like. Because I'm old now, so I'm like, well, instead of this artificial strawberry, what if we just had fruit? That's my old lady voice. Move on. Wow. You got a lot to look forward to. Anyway, this is the raspberry lemonade, and it's fantastic. Like, no joke, one of the best ciders I've ever had. Because speaking of things being too sweet, normally cider is, and it often can have that kind of like gasoline chemically taste to it. Saccharin. Yeah, but that is a little bit tart because of the lemon. It's definitely got some sweetness because of the raspberry, but not too much. That's a really great cider. Oh. Okay. Well, the peach berry, oh. also not super sweet, sweeter than the strawberry, uh, sweeter than the raspberry lemonade by far, but a still really refreshing cider. That uh, Tropicola tastes a little bit like sunscreen. I do Enjoy. like coconut LaCroix. You like that? Um, this, the, the Tropicola, for those of you who like a very strong coconut flavor it, might get on board with this, but no, there's some aftertaste to it that is... I love coconut. That's a, that's a there's something that tastes like that. It's a candy. It's in a now and later. There's something in the world that tastes like that. It's almost like those off-brand gummies. It's a gummy or it's a it's now like a and gummy later. shark. How dare you bring sharks? It's a, it's a gummy. This. It's a gummy shark flavor. Dare you? I'm just telling you that's what it is. I can't quite. It's a jelly bean. What's it's a jelly, jelly bean? bean? It's a jelly bean. The pina colada jelly bean. Yeah. 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 Not into it. No. This one, I would get a, a full size of. Besides like a lime or a cucumber cider, which I enjoy, this is very, very delicious. And it would be really good on a hot day. And as a reminder, you can get full size of any of the ciders or beers if you don't want to do the flight and subject yourself to the jelly bean. If you want to. Okay. <sighs> dessert time. Indeed. That felt like drinking dessert, both delicious and otherwise. But... What do I want for dessert? 
I to figure out if I win before I mull over a choice. Okay. Yeah. You got it. You got it. Turkey. Okay. Yep. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Interesting. Okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh. She now has to think about dessert. I do have to think about dessert. Okay, so my favorite dessert in the whole festival is the carrot cake in America, but we're trying to have things we haven't had before, or at least not this year. So I'm thinking about the Alps has a dark chocolate fondue with fresh fruit and pound cake. Germany has an apple strudel. Italy has a lemon ricotta cheesecake, but I don't think I'm I'm ready to be disappointed again. I could make, let's get the funnel cake, but I'm not that mean, and Alan doesn't like funnel cake. Okay, I'm between two options. I love the Lamington, which is a yellow cake with chocolate and raspberry and coconut in Australia, but they have pesto there, which Alan is allergic to pine nuts. So we usually skip that booth. Or in France, there's a vanilla creme brulee with strawberry jam. So I think I'm gonna stop by Australia and see what their pesto is made out of. And if it's got pine nuts in it, we'll keep going to France. Otherwise, we'll get the cake. Made it all the way down under. I'm sorry to anyone from Australia. I regret that immediately. Uh, here in Australia, you've got a shrimp dish. You've got a lamb chop that does have pesto on it, which is what Alan's asking about, as well as the lambington, which is the dessert I'm hoping to get, and a few different wines and a beer. I did ask the cast members about my allergy, which is to pine nuts, and found out that there were no pine nuts in the dishes that I was concerned about. They actually don't use it in their pesto. They use cashews. Um, but it was a really quick interaction. They called the chef and were able to check very quickly. Sometimes it does take longer than others. That's okay. If you're worried about your allergy, it's worth the wait. If they're able to accommodate you, they'll let you know. And if, and if they're not, they'll be able to give you other alternatives as well. But I'm excited to enjoy the Lamington. So here it is in all of its glory. It has been years since I've enjoyed this cake. It was one of my favorites um, before they added the jam to it, like a long time ago. I don't remember it having raspberry jam, but it's a very simple yellow cake, chocolate frosting, toasted coconut, and a layer of raspberry jam in there, which I'm giddy about. Yep. Simple deliciousness. There's just this very thin layer of the icing, which is good because it's really rich. I love the crunch from the toasted coconut. The cake is moist and delicious. Now I'm gonna get a bite with the jam. It's giving the carrot cake a run for its money as far as best desserts go. It's simple, the flavors complement each other. It's a big piece. Good work, Australia. Okay, it's very serious. It's the last round. I have won. You have. Alan has won too. Yeah. So if he wins, we tie the uh, episode. Mm -hmm. If I win, I win for the first time, maybe ever. No, you won the contemporary one. Okay. We did the monorail crawl. Okay, but all the other ones, Alan has won. So. So Dessert. serious. No. We just, Drinks. Did you forget what round we were on? Yes. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Talking to your hand, huh? All right, ready? I'll do it eyes closed. No. Should we do it back to back? Someone suggested that. We tried it once. Let's try. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. And it's a tie, ladies and gentlemen. You know. Much like Ted Lasso, I don't care for the tie. Nor do I, but here we are. Drinks. So, I thought this was gonna be harder to decision than it was, uh, but I do wanna go to the refreshment outpost. There was a beer listed there by the Gulfstream Brewing Company. It's a Cloud Nine Watermelon Hibiscus Lager that uh, I saw when we were doing our first food and wine video, but unfortunately because of the budgetary restrictions, we were not able to get. We have no such restriction now. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I was considering going to America for a beer flight or to the refreshment port because they had some interesting looking citrusy style beverages uh, or even to Ireland to pick up some mead. But something about this hibiscus beer really called to me and I, uh, I've i been wanting it since our food and wine trip the first time around. Hey Alan. Yep. Does that terrify you? Does what terrify me? Oh, it's so many birds. Look at all those birds. It's too many, nope, don't like it, don't like it. Turning away from it now. 
The thing about birds is... Oh, tell me, you're an avian expert. They're a nightmare. No. <laughs> my official uh, that your stance my official review of birds in general that's just so many of them they could take us down refreshment outpost is a full-time stand here in epcot however they do feature unique items during the festival times of year normally what you'd find here are beers some slushy beverages and hot dogs but today we are getting the watermelon hibiscus lager and i could not be more thrilled cheers Oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. That's just as refreshing as I wanted it to be. A little bit of watermelon, some floral notes from the hibiscus. That's the best beer at this festival. Hands down. The watermelon is so good. It's just a little bit of that watermelon, but it's a light beer. But it's not like a watered down light beer, no. you know what I mean? It still has a little zip to it. You still taste it. Now, again, if you don't like fruit beers, probably not going to be for you. Ooh, but that I'll, is delicious. But I'll be honest. This might convert you. This might convert you to a fruit beer. Also, something in my body's equilibrium changes when the lanterns and the nighttime music at Epcot come on. I didn't know where we were going with that. <laughs> it's like, I just feel like it's just the best. Night at the Disney parks is my favorite. I've been doing a series on it and at Epcot specifically, the lanterns coming on feeds my soul. Cheers. <sighs> well, that is a wrap on another Winter Picks Dinner, and uh, where would you like to see us play next? I tied this time, so maybe things are looking up. <laughs> Something in the air. Well, folks, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation, join us on Discord. All those links down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Good night. Now Good night. go watch our first food and wine video for more eats. This music's a vibe. This is working out. Was it not? <laughs>